this is the last video going through the review exercises, questions 43 to 48. For each of these scenarios, we're going to determine whether the question is best answered with a confidence interval or a hypothesis test, and which of the formula-based methods would be most appropriate to use. So first of all, remember that a confidence interval is used for estimation. So it's helpful when we're looking for trying to answer a question with a number. And the hypothesis test is useful for determining whether we have strong evidence to support a claim or not. So a hypothesis test is useful when we want to answer a yes or no type question. So first of all, question 43, we say, okay, when asking people to choose between chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry milkshakes, are all three flavors equally popular? So this is a yes or no type of question. Either yes, they are equally popular, or no, they're not equally popular. So this is definitely going to be a hypothesis test. Now, which of the formula-based methods I need to use depends on the type of variable that I have. And here we can see people are going to be choosing a flavor, so that's going to be a categorical variable. And there are three categories, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. So since we have three categories, I can't just do a simple test for a single proportion. Instead, I need to use our chi-square goodness of fit test. In this situation, our null hypothesis would be that the proportion who prefer chocolate is equal to the proportion who prefer strawberry is equal to the proportion who prefer vanilla, and they're all one-third, right? And that would be our null hypothesis for our goodness of fit test. Question 44, we want to know what proportion of cyclists wear helmets while riding on the UVM campus? So this is not a yes or no question. If I asked you what proportion and you said yes, I would not be satisfied, right? So this is an estimation type of question. So I need to use a confidence interval for this one. Now, what type of confidence interval? Let's think about what kind of variable we have. 50 cyclists were observed on campus, and whether they wore a helmet or not is what's being recorded. So we've got one categorical variable. There are only two categories, so we'd make a confidence interval for a single proportion. Question 45, what is the average amount of credit card debt among all UVM students? Again, this is not a yes or no question. It's something where I'm trying to estimate a numerical value, so I again would use a confidence interval. Presumably, I'd be asking each student how much credit card they de debt they have, which would be a quantitative variable. So I'd be making a confidence interval for a single mean in this situation. Is there a so an association between a person's Facebook relationship status? Married, single, in a relationship, it's complicated. I don't know what else they have these days. And their political leaning, whether they're liberal, moderate, or conservative. So here, I first of all have a yes or no question. Is there an association or is there not? So this is a hypothesis test. And the types of variables I have, I have two categorical variables. But I can see that they each of them has more than two categories. So I can't do just a test for a difference in proportions because I'd have to have both variables having just two categories to do that. So instead, this is a situation where I could use the chi-square test for association. And if you're trying to remember which one of the chi-squares is for sort of like a single categorical and which one's for a two categorical, keep in mind that you can't have an association unless you have two variables. So the test for association is when you've got the two categorical variables. Question 47, does the average UVM student gain weight during their first semester of college? Okay, that is a yes or no question, so that's going to be a hypothesis test. 
Weights in August and May are recorded for 100 first-year students. Okay, so presumably these are the same students being recorded both in August and in May. So I have paired data, weight measured more than once on each student. And so I would use the um, paired mean of the differences or this would be called a paired t-test, remember? we would be focusing on the mean of the differences. And then our last scenario, we're going to see the end of the review. How much does drinking sports drink improve marathon performance compared to drinking water? 60 marathon runners were randomly assigned to drink either sports drink or water, and the time for each runner was recorded. So first of all, we've got a how much so I'm looking for a numerical answer. So this would be a confidence interval. And when I think about the types of variables I have here, I have sports drink or water is my explanatory variable. So that is one categorical. And then I've got the time to finish the marathon. So that would be one quantitative variable. I have to ask myself in the situation, do I have paired data or independent groups? Since they were randomly assigned to do either the sports drink or the water, but not both, I have independent groups. So in this situation, I'd focus on a difference in means. And that brings us to the end of the review. I hope you found this helpful. Have a good day.